Welcome to the We Are Libertarians Daily Podcast. I'm Hody Johns. I'm here with Sarah Brady Wagner. How you doing? I'm doing great. So, what exciting topic are we talking about? Man, this is going to bum you out because I'm feeling excited. I'm just happy to talk with you. And then we get to talk about collateral consequences, which, which is like the biggest bummer in the legal system today. So yeah. uh, I guess I better uh, mellow out. Um, it's pretty much all the ways that your life gets screwed over is, that you didn't even realize after you're done dealing with uh, the criminal justice system. Yeah. What What are collateral consequences? Let's start there. You're probably a better person to define it than I am. Well, the reason that I am probably a better person to define it is because I am personally a felon. So collateral consequences are exactly what I said before. They're all of the additional uh, consequences and things that happen when you are convicted of a crime. Usually uh, they're associated with felonies, but sometimes it, misdemeanor is good enough too. But these are all the things that are not actually included in your sentence. Um, and generally you're not ever directly told about these consequences until you run into them. Uh, so the easiest example of this is uh, licensing laws. Mm almost every licensing law has some form of collateral consequence um, that says if you have a conviction, sometimes it specifies what kind, that you can be denied a license. Uh, sometimes it's as simple as that. Uh, sometimes they give more specifics, but there are different ways that we restrict people who've already had um, experience with the criminal justice system, in addition to the punishments that we officially hand out. You're not alone. In, and I want to do I do want to get into the specifics with licensing in a moment. But I just want to preface this whole conversation by saying one, you're not alone by saying you're a felon. Uh, according to our own Justice Department and census takers, everyone in America is a felon. It's just a matter of finding the ones that we've caught. You've yeah. committed a felony at some point in your life. you just don't know about it. I cannot tell enough people that. The other thing is 86% of these felons are on victimless crimes. I know we quoted it in another episode. You'll find it again in the show notes here. It is true. 86% of these felons, victimless crimes. So before you get on your high horse and say, oh, these these ruthless thugs. You should have thought of that before you did it. Yeah, should have thought of that before you did it. First of all, you should have thought of that before you did it. You're just lucky you didn't get caught for whatever f felony you committed. And secondly... A lot of these are victimless. And yes. Just to give people perspective, my crime was I shared a prescription medication in college. Um, and it is something that I really serves well to give people that moment to going, oh, oh, OK, maybe I have done a felony that just never you know, got me in trouble. Yep. I assume you did that without their consent, right? Uh, well, with the person I gave it to, I was it was their consent. I did it without the government's consent. Well, then why is that a crime? I don't understand. Because you're not allowed to have prescription medication without permission. Why do I need a prescription for a medication that I voluntarily agree with? Uh, you see where I'm going with uh, this, yeah. don't you? Because yeah. we need to protect you from yourself. Okay, that's not the subject. We're talking about Sorry, collateral tangent, consequences. Tangent. No, I'm taking it there because <laughs> it frustrates the heck out of me that, you're, that you are a felon. And that, um, oh, uh, uh. Who, who's the guy the the who got caught in the the big sex scandal? He's the whole oh. Me Too movement guy. He oh, hasn't um, been, he hasn't been convicted yet. Harvey Weinstein. I, Harvey Weinstein's apparently not a felon yet, right? So, oh no, so. my favorite example is uh, Brock Turner, who's uh, oh. famous for getting only ended up going to jail for three months uh, for a digital rape of a another college student. Um, so he put his body in someone else's without their consent. Not he went to jail for less time than I did. Ugh. Okay. Collateral consequences are, like you said, they affect licensing. They affect a ton of stuff. I guess we'll start they affect where you licensing. can live. They, one of, I, I guess I should say my biggest problem with collateral consequences, they are a part of, I guess, sentencing. They're a punishment that you get that affect your life two big problems one they're not associated with rehabilitation as far as i can tell which i thought was the point of our justice system and no the there's, there's segregation most of the time 
Yeah. And the second is that they are they are not limited in scope. In fact, I, I so I have a list and we should go through them and we can start with licensing here. That it, it, it just says, you know, your your parole or, or your part of the terms of your sentence may affect you getting a license. And this is up to whose discretion is this up to? Um, well, that depends on the particular licensure. Usually uh, it's up to human discretion of a board that are given the ability to deny you if they choose. Uh, one phrase that you'll see that comes up in a lot of legislation uh, is uh, is make, is it requires you in order to obtain a license to uh, be a person of upstanding moral character. And most states include having any sort of criminal conviction as adequate grounds to consider that you don't have necessary upstanding moral character. Um, another easy example is anything having to do with children uh, is another system where any licenses involving that we're very comfortable just adding in wide um, blanket opportunities to uh, deny not only people who have been convicted of crimes, but um, just if you are closely related or associating with them. So uh, the easiest example I can give is um, I'm a professional nanny. So I have for a decade now been hired to go into other people's homes and raise their children for them. Um, I love what I do. My clients have loved me. I mean, I've been with my current family now for almost four years. Um, but it is not legal for me to run my own at-home daycare. Um, and it also wouldn't be legal for my husband to run one, even though he's not any sort of convicted felon or even, you know, he doesn't even have a criminal record. But because I live in the same house, he wouldn't be able to have an at-home daycare here. I had no idea. So so it's because you live with him. Mm -hmm. You're... Because the licensure okay. to the licensure law is to get licensed to run a daycare out of your house in my state. And actually in most states, uh, specifically says that anyone over 18 in the household has to go through a criminal background check. And if they have anything in the last five years, then you were denied your license. Think about license as a broad a term as possible as well to think of how this might apply to you. You might say, I'm, oh, I'm not applying for a daycare, so that's fine. Your driver's license is a license. Your food mm -hmm. handler's permit is a license. So if you, you know, if you want to serve in a restaurant, potentially you can't get it in your state. And again, this is not something you can control. This is just a what they call a collateral consequence. This is just part of this is just part of the whole shtick. Oh, you got busted yeah. for sharing a prescription with a voluntary friend. You got caught and now all of a sudden you can't serve food at a restaurant. You can't have an at-home daycare you can't drive those things aren't related yeah and they also kind of undermine you know what you were saying before they undermine rehabilitation they undermine the ability to successfully reintegrate a person into your society i mean in a lot in some cases drug felons are actually and in my case i'm also considered a drug felon are actually one of the um more egregious examples because we consider that to be something that's proven that you're um your inability to make a good choice. And so there are all sorts of licensures that uh, essentially try and insulate you from anything that you might have to make an important choice. Uh, but that really makes it difficult for people to ever prove that they have rehabilitated, that they've gotten better. Um, and it's, it's not just limited to licensure. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest collateral consequences that you will run into as a felon um, is when it comes to housing or, or federal um, grants. So when I became a felon, I quickly found out that you are um, not able to take out student loans. And if you were convicted at the time where you were currently using a student loan, you immediately have to pay back the entirety of the loan. Uh, you're not allowed to live in any sort of uh, government subsidized housing. So even if you have a relative who lives in subsidized housing. You're not allowed to live with them. Um, you are, in most states, you're barred from using any sort of public assistance, including food stamps, for six months. Yep. So the position that we put people into is you can't get a job. And if you can get a job, it has to be something where it's very low wage. It requires no license, no skills. You, uh, we're not going to help you find any place to uh, live. And in fact, you are one of the 
uh, in fact, you were the only class of people that it is legal to discriminate against in the United States. You can be denied housing even in the private sector. The so you're hitting on all the bullet points. You're doing all the hits, right? <laughs> Sorry. If only it was. If only this was a low light reel. You know, this is this is this is the government's blooper reel, I guess, of, of things that they could do to you for committing what is often a victimless crime. And, and this is uh, we've already got jail. We've already talked about how terrible that is. We've talked about forced labor. We've talked, you know, all these these other bad things they can do. Collateral consequences. Uh, I, I am confused as to why they even call them collateral, because they have to be very deliberate. Because when you get a, for example, occupational no. licensure, that is often done through the private sector, sometimes doesn't even involve the state. They actually have to go in and say, no, this person can't have an occupational license. Well, it's considered collateral because the direct consequences are those that you're issued in sentencing. So your direct consequences include any fines you're given, court costs, uh, you know, the time you actually spend incarcerated or on probation. The reason they're considered collateral is because you don't know about them. And oftentimes courts and even uh, your defense attorneys, even the uh, prosecutors and the judges involved in the case likely don't know exactly what they're handing to you when you are convicted of a sentence. Um, this was actually recently brought to the attention of the federal government, and their response uh, a few years back was to say, wow, you know what, we don't even know what all of these are. And there's no real way to address uh, the extent of all of these consequences until we know what they are to begin with. So they started by trying to make a database. Right, and so to complete my point, and the database is a great place to start, is that for me, when I hear the term collateral, I think is, oh, that's too bad this got caught in the crossfire. Like, we dropped this bomb, and there were some kids there, and that's too bad. That's collateral for me. When I see that some of the things that they have to do to punish you, it's done deliberately, and they go out of their way to make it happen. Now, there's some things that just says, because you're a felon, your employer can discriminate discriminate against you. But when they actively have to say, I have to make a database, I have to make sure you don't get an occupational license, I have to make sure, that becomes non-collateral for me anymore. That becomes very intentional. That becomes work. That That doesn't say, this was a side effect to your punishment. This says, this is more punishment. Well, I guess the reason that it's considered collateral is because um, you're, I feel like you're giving too much credit to the, uh, to the people who are doing the sentencing there, is that it's not necessarily that they want you to have these. And in a lot of cases, when this is brought up to um, attorneys and judges, you know, when they're made aware of the extent of uh, the effect that these kind of convictions have on people, you know, they're just as outraged and, you know, this is unfair, this is, you're giving people consequences of their actions that go far beyond uh, what we had intended when you hand down their sentence. But they're just considered collateral because it, it was just an extra thing. You know, we didn't intend to prevent you from being able to have an in-home daycare. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that in-home daycares were protected against people like you. And that kind of makes it considered to be a, a sidestep thing. You know, it, it's not about you personally. We're not going out of our way to give this to you. But you put yourself in this class of person to begin with, and these are the conse this is what goes along with being a convict. This is one of those, I wasn't trying to shoot you. I was tr trying to shoot the wall, and I shot through you. Yeah. That and I'm sorry that you were standing there. Right. I, 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 <laughs> I have a tough time calling it collateral, but that's what we're calling it. That's what they're calling it. That's how we describe the term. So I guess I, I will let the go that go. I know it's a matter of semantics. It just for me. It no, but I mean it is really the part that that it, it frustrates and infuriates is these are it's something that we are actively doing to people, and it's considered an afterthought. So much so that you know they have to commission a database to see how much they've done to people. Right. I guess I think of it more of in terms of when I hear collateral, I think whoopsies. And this has gone yeah. beyond whoopsies, right? This is, they've affected your life. They're going out of their way to do so. They're, they're yeah. So some some other things that you touched on there, no, no program, no government programs at all. And uh, this is not just, I think people think welfare and we think, well, we don't want them on welfare anyway. That's good. First of all, if there's anybody who needs help, it's probably people that have been incarcerated for any amount of time. But 
And so that's if you believe it well in welfare at all. Even if you don't, think of all the other federal programs that aren't welfare-based that you can get into. I mean, we're talking student loan programs. You can't get into those. Or, um, or uh, I mean, military programs, other things that we might consider helpful to, to us or even services of society that you can no longer be a part of. So There are so- often specialized programs that are designed just for convicts uh, that are administered separately. But again, that, that goes back to that issue of it's, it's more of a system of segregation than it is a system of rehabilitation. You know, you have separate job training programs because, well, you're barred from being involved in the standard, you know, just job retraining. Right. I'm not I'm not a, a uh, at home day- daycare. I'm a felon at home daycare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that sounds like something I want to sign up for. Uh, loss of voting rights. Uh, I don't think it'll be anybody will be bummed out in uh, ineligible for jury duty. I think that that's one that people will just kind of say, "Oh, all right." Can't yeah. be a notary either. Yeah, can't be a notary. Okay. Yeah, because it's considered a position of public trust. Also, a um, you can't be a real estate broker. Um, there's a lot of of things that that you really immediately ask why that doesn't seem like it makes sense. Um. But you, they're usually just very vaguely written statutes. I mean, just just looking right now, there's over forty five thousand different individual laws yeah. that, in some way or another, uh, restrict the freedoms of, of people who've been convicted. To play devil's advocate a little bit, let me ask you, because let, let's say I'm I'm the type of libertarian. Because here's the type of libertarian that that I'm sure. I will have a conversation with about this episode and they're going to say, well, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. We shouldn't do victimless, you know, victimless crime shouldn't be punishable. I get all that, but shouldn't, isn't it people's right to discriminate? Shouldn't don't other people have a right to know that you committed a felony? What if you're a rapist or a murderer? You know, I shouldn't, I know if my chiropractor has committed malpractice in the past, what would you say to those people? I would say that these laws don't actually do anything to help you know that at all. Um, you know, it's, this is one of the big reasons why, you know, I still work in childcare. These laws have done nothing to prevent me from working in childcare. Uh, what they have done is prevent me from being able to work in specific parts of that sector that the government has decided to take licensure control over. Um, but so, there are none, none of, there's nothing in, in collateral consequence laws that serve in any form to notify the public. These are, are very private um, punishments. When somebody is denied a license and is not able to pursue a particular line of work, you don't know about that. You don't know. You didn't have the choice to choose whether or not um, someone that you work with or someone that you hire is a convict or not. The government's decided to make that choice for you. They're deciding to say that that you couldn't make that um, decision responsibly, um, and you wouldn't bother to know that information anyways. I'm going to go out of my comfort zone. I love numbers. I love statistics. I love reading all these definitions here. I'm going to give you a personal story for me. I used to work in the restaurant business. I loved it. I did restaurant management. We had somebody who was a convicted felon. It was on a drug offense. Uh, it was from way younger. It was, uh, it, it obviously did not affect him anymore. And he was a great restaurant employee. He, we wanted to make him a kitchen manager. We couldn't because of these laws that say, you know, he's a felon. I'm sorry, you can't make him your kitchen manager in an official capacity. And so we say, okay, so what we did is we bumped his hourly wages up to the point where he would have been making that salary and unofficially gave him the title. It made it inconvenient. He wasn't able to attend the retreat that the other managers went to. But he was, for all intents and purposes, our, our kitchen manager. It didn't stop us. It, 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 and, and I imagine that that experience is going to be the same experience for so many other people. If they can't do it publicly, then they're just going to do it privately. If they and do, they do. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I mean, this guy was a great kitchen manager. It didn't stop him. And his drug offense had no bearing on that. And... <sighs> Forgive me for being up and in anybody's face about it, but there is nothing rehabilitatory from keeping him from being a restaurant manager, even if he still did drugs. There's nothing that 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 helped that didn't help him in any way. That didn't 
that wasn't going to aid in down the page. Oh, he's a restaurant manager now. He's going to get back into doing drugs again. Yeah, even if you're even if you're a fan of licensure, which I know most libertarians are, are not. Yeah. Um, what these laws do is if, when you're when you're dealing with somebody who is going to find out that they're subject to one of these collateral consequences. I know I've said it plenty of times, but they don't tell you up front. This is not something that like when you're convicted, you're handed a packet full of things you can't do. This is a situation where you have someone who has decided I want to, you know, in their case, I, I'm working this job. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. I'm gaining skills. I want to be a, a manager. And once you get to that point where you actually start to go through the bureaucracy of trying to get the licensure from the government, then you find out that because of a decision that you made many years ago that you've learned from, that you have grown from. And I mean, I would take the fact that you're trying to pursue a licensed profession as at least a piece of evidence saying that you have grown and are trying to further your life. That is when you find out that this is something you can't do. You know, it, it, it doesn't serve to have any beneficial effect either on the community or on the individual. It just serves to cause more issues. Right. For the community, that's one more licensed professional that they're not going to be able to go to. That's one more choice they don't have. And for the individual, that's one less way he can become a contributing member of society. You just Or in even a lot of cases, you'll have, this is what leads people to consider under the table work. So sometimes the government's the one that loses out, where you have somebody who still continues to pursue a licensed profession, but they do so without that license. And without paying all of the various fees that the government would be able to reap off of them and they, uh, you know, otherwise. And I want to cap off by saying something that you started with, which is that this is one of the few groups that you can just legally discriminate against. Mm -hmm. That everybody says, well, that makes sense. You know, you got, they have, they're a felon. You can discriminate against them. Look, even if you believe that people should legally be allowed to discriminate, discrimination sucks. Right. So like we can talk about rights all day, but as far as harvesting like a libertarian culture, that really sucks. And the other thing is we need to remember, again, 86 percent of these people, victimless crime, shouldn't have felonies. So just because you're able to discriminate against them doesn't mean you should. And it it's wrong. And it's something that that we can legally get away with. The government takes great effort in making sure you don't get it, get licensed. But even in the public sector, we we are allowed to say, you know, I'm not going to house you. I'm not going to feed you. I don't want to do business with you. I don't want to let you. Uh, you can foster. say I'm not going to hire you for no other reason. Right. Right. I mean, that's I had that option every time as a restaurant manager and, and was encouraged to take it to say, oh, if they're a felon, you know, there's only trouble that can come because if all of a sudden there's a problem, you hired a felon and everything's on you. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking, and this is so we talked about denying them higher level work. This is lower level work. This is washing dishes and serving and waiting tables and bussing tables. Yeah, I mean, these this, are things that don't require resumes. They just require you to fill an application out. But those applications have a little box that says, have you ever been arrested or convicted of a crime? There's just so little control, I feel like, that if you have have this felony on you that that you you're you're able to know with certainty that anybody will hire you that you no know, matter how you know how felons tend to add tend to express their control in these situations um convicted felons are actually one of the highest uh, groups to uh, pursue entrepreneurship uh, when you are locked out of being able to you know engage in the market as it exists you have to carve a place for yourself you know these these are not people that we want to keep out they aren't all bad people you know and I know it's 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 not good for the economy. It's not good for the government. It's not good for the people. Mm -mm. Um, oh, it's all bad. Uh, it's all bad. Yeah, I, I wish I wish I had something more positive about it. But even in those cases where we use it with the intention of protecting, I mean, I keep coming back to childcare as an example. Unlicensed home daycares are not an uncommon thing. Um, they're not even something people avoid. So you're not you're not protecting people with these laws. You're just giving people more incentive to go around them. I I don't ask my hot dog vendor if he's a convicted felon. I just want to make sure his hot dogs are good. And him not being able to operate the stand, even if he was serving bad wieners, doesn't him being a felon has no bearing on that. You know, and and 
not licensing him or licensing him doesn't make that do, isn't the best moderator for desertion. That's me. That's the consumer. And that's the person who should be making these decisions. So when we're wrapping up, I will say this. This is something that libertarians can actually get into right now. There's reform going on right now to make collateral consequences no longer collateral. And there are no and to make them part of sentencing. And that's work that's being done right now um, in the United States. So that's something to get involved in. If you, you might see it on, on a ballot. If you see your local politician thinking about it, please encourage them to look it over. It's something that we can, thankfully, because there are state and local police departments, it's something we actually can affect on the local level as well. Um, so get in on the movement to say, hey, these are still people. I want them to contribute. I want them to to rehabilitate I, the whole point of this thing is to help them re rehabilitate encourage them to make this part of sentencing to say it's no longer an accident either i'm making sure that you can't do this one thing again you know say say you're a malpractice uh, chiropractor okay let's make sure the guy can't get a medical license again fine but do we need to make sure that he can't wait tables ever again that's probably okay for him to bust my table at Applebee's. So I, I think let's let's get on board while this wave is coming through. And th that's that's what I got to say. What do you got to say? Well, I want to say if, if people want a little bit more of a direct way to get involved uh, at your local level, most of these consequences through licensure um, are dealt with through boards. So sometimes it's a board that must actively deny a person. Sometimes it's a blanket denial and people have the opportunity to appeal to a board. But these boards are made up of, of individuals and citizens from your communities. You know, there's licensure boards for all sorts of things in your state and in your county that uh, chances are pretty good that if you go and you ask and you, you know, get more involved and ask the right people, you'll find out that there's a seat that just requires somebody to volunteer. Um, and a lot of times you don't even have to be a, an expert in the subject matter. I mean, I have a friend who's on the locksmith's board because you have to be licensed and go in front of a board to be a locksmith. Um, but you don't have to be uh, an expert in locksmithing in order to sit on that board and decide who's licensed for it. Got so if you it. want to get involved and make a concrete um, difference and be able to be that voice of reason that says, hey, maybe we don't need to deny this person a license just because they had some weed on them when they were 19, then that's a way you can do it. That's amazing advice. That's amazing advice. So do get involved with that. Get involved with the We Are Libertarians Network. Subscribe, click, view, share. You know what we're going to tell you to do. Just please do it. Uh, we really love talking to you. Sarah and I hit you a couple times a week, and we're just really grateful for the opportunity to be doing this. But we can't do it unless you keep clicking and cl keep liking and keep sharing. So uh, anything else you want to add, Sarah? Well, if you guys are enjoying, please let us know any uh, comments you have, any suggestions for future episodes, and we'll look forward to talking to you again. All right, that's perfect.